we opened the pub in 1999 and to be honest I didn't look up for three or four years because we were so busy getting the place established and you know building a reputation and building a team and then after about three or four years I'd, I'd got a team of people and I started to look for you know what is the character of what we do. And then I started to look up and I wanted to look into the history of the area because I was a historian and um, I found out, I started to research why the area was such a food area and the first place I went was the Doomsday Book and I was amazed to see, 1086, that this area that surrounds us was owned by the kitchens of the Archbishop of Canterbury. So it was a food production area a thousand years ago. So that led me into this whole idea, the French idea of terroir. You know, why is this such a special area? Well, I did some research. It's the interconnection between the sea, the salt marsh, what flies above us, the land just inland and all that kind of stuff. And I suddenly found this amazing larder. At first I was thinking, I, I came up with this idea of doing a tasting menu, but using everything that's just from around here, because we had everything. And I was going to call it terroir, but I thought that's a bit pretentious. And so I just slowly launched the tasting menu. Uh, basically I would be in the kitchen just cooking the tasting menu with everyone around me. So they would be doing normal service and there'd be maybe two or three tables having the tasting menu and I'd be kind of jumping in on their section, getting in the way. And that was how it started. One of the things when uh, I was doing this terroir menu and yeah, the idea of a tasting menu serving amazing local stuff, I uh, suddenly realised I, I couldn't use the same ingredients as everyone else or else the food wouldn't be much different and so I uh, started looking at things like the fundamentals, that the elements that we were serving. I made my own salt not because it tastes any different but because I come from sea, this is sea salt uh, and they used to make salt here in Roman times and a thousand years ago. Then I started to make my own butter because we had this great cream from a dairy. Now that was the beginning of what is now more common you know because now if I tell people, oh, we make our own bread and butter and salt and, um, you know, uh, pickle everything and forage and all that, you say all that, people go, yeah, so what? You know, that's, doesn't everyone do that? Well, no, they didn't. This was, this, you know, us and others were, were at the beginning of it. We did start with a small garden as soon as I did the tasting menu because I wanted some things that would blow people's minds with how fresh they were. Beans that still had sap in them. Peas that were so sweet that popped in your mouth that didn't need to be cooked. So around about 2004 or 5, we had a small garden out the back. And of course, not many people having the tasting menu. What then happened was that we started to use the big area of land at the back. And there we put up two polytunnels and now we grow a huge amount of vegetables from there. And in the summer, we get up to 80, 90%. The over kind of arching uh, philosophy of cooking at the Sportsman is all about a very misunderstood word, which is simplicity. And I don't mean simplicity sounds lazy. It sounds like, oh, I can't be, you know. No, I mean simplicity for a reason, for a positive reason, which is that simplicity and minimalism allow you to taste more of what you're eating. When something turns up in front of me and it's got smears and flowers and all this stuff all over the place, I'm thinking, you're doing that for the visual effect. You're not thinking about the person eating it. I'm just interested. You know, of course we want the food to look nice and we do all that, but I'm just interested in, in blowing people's minds with the ingredients and the technique. And that technique is, you know, don't try and change anything too much. I do it to try and create amazing food. All I'm interested in is that moment that the customer puts some food in their mouth. I want them to, be, to eat something that makes them... Actually, sometimes I want it to creep up on them, like it has done on me at, say, somewhere like Chez Panisse, where you think, why is this food so good? You know, you almost can't work it out. And it's really, it's because, yeah, that was picked this morning, that comes from a farm down the road and they feed them with apples and blah, blah. And you put together, and it, it, it has that effect. I always remember Marco Pierre White, great quote, how do you get everything right? Well, you just do all the little things right. And if you do little thing right after another, this big thing happens at the end.
We have an amazing staff retention. Dan, my head chef, has been here for 20 years. And the main reason, one is because it's a really lovely place and a lovely environment to work in. So everyone gets on well, they're very happy. Um, also, we're out of London. Thinking about the legacy, about what we, what we end up with, I feel like, because it's been here 20 years, because it's such a local institution, and because we've been so successful, and that success is down to the people who work here. I mean, don't, you know, there's no other reason. It's the people in the building. Well, I feel like it would be quite nice to somehow pass it on you know, uh, or a cooperative. I mean, I love the idea of cooperatives, where basically the people who work there are shareholders. And so, you know, businesses like John Lewis and the co-op from Rochdale, all those kind of things which were very trendy at the end of the 18th century, I think will come back again. And I think the idea of a cooperative gives people a stake in their business. So obviously they then care about how good it is. And I'd love to do something like that, but how that will happen will, will, will become more apparent over the, year, over the next 10 years.